I'd like to call this meeting of the Kalamazoo City Com Commission to order for Monday, September 19, 2016. Clerk Forling, please call the roll. Commissioner Anderson. Here. Commissioner Nod. Here. Commissioner Mozart. <laughs> Present. Commissioner Sykes. Here. Commissioner Urban. Here. Vice Mayor Cooney. Present. Mayor Hopewell. Present. For our opening ceremony this evening, we will have an invocation by Reverend Dr. Seth Wildreyer of the Kalamazoo First Presbyterian Church. I ask that you stand for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Do not say these prayers. It violates God's rights, the founding fathers' rights, and my rights. Pastor. Let us pray. Dear loving God of classrooms and boardrooms and living rooms, of business floors and restaurants and neighborhood streets, of homeless shelters and city chambers, of parks and all people who gather in these places, we are grateful for the gift of this evening to discuss questions and work for what's best in our beloved Kalamazoo. We're grateful for the experiences and perspectives of all who gathered around these tables and every person with a voice to be heard. We are grateful for the witness of faithful people in all ages and places who have cultivated abundant life as they serve the common good. In this great lineage of Abraham and Jesus and Muhammad, in the wisdom of Eastern religions and Native Americans, and in every other way we know and pursue life in your love, fill us all now with your gifts of spirit. Help us speak and listen with patience and forbearance, with compassion and collaboration, seeking not to accentuate failures and limitations and suspicions so much as the goodness in every person, the possibilities for our community, the elimination of poverty and prejudice and injustice, the hope and expectation of life and the fullness of peace for all of us and for all creation. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm taking every one of you to the Sir, I'm going to ask you not to do that. You have an opportunity to speak this no evening. Right you have an opportunity to speak I this evening no right at the end of the meeting, and you're not I going to be in here disrupting this, or we're going to escort you out of this building. Come on, guys. Commissioners, you have before you the agenda for this evening. Are there any changes? Hearing none, anyone in the audience wanting to comment on items under F, the consent agenda, that item will need to be moved to the regular agenda. If you have an item, please indicate at this time. Hearing none, communications. Manager Ritzman. None, Your Honor. Oh, sorry. Consent agenda, please. 
We have 10 items. Uh, number 10 is being uh, held over until October 17, 2016. First, we have approval of a one-year contract extension with student haulers for the removal and disposal of trash, nuisances, and garbage collected pursuant to the enforcement of various city ordinances, 15A, 22-3, 22-4, and 22-5 in the amount of $120,000. Next, the approval of a contract extension with Staff Brothers for mowing and trimming at city parks in the amount of $121,105. Next, we have approval of professional engineering design services by Jones and Henry Engineers for the design of an access road to the southwest and portage sanitary sewer interceptors between Kilgore Road and Stockbridge Avenue within the city of Kalamazoo in the amount of $144,000. Next, we have approval of a contract with Brasco International Incorporated for the purchase of up to 30 small bus passenger shelters up to five large bus passenger shelters and optional accessories like bike racks and garbage cans over a five year period for an amount up to $160,000. Next, the approval of a two year contract with Salinas LLC for cationic emulsion polymer in the amount of $344,476. Next, the approval of a three year contract with Cruisers West to provide emergency vehicle equipment installation and repair services in the amount of $405,610.15. Next, the adoption of a resolution approving an application to the Michigan Liquor Control Commission for a special license to serve alcohol at the 100 Extraordinary Women event in on Wednesday, October 19th at the Kalamazoo Institute of Arts to raise money for the Bronson Park 21st Century Campaign. Next, the approval of a transit services agreement between Ashtamo Township, the City of Kalamazoo, and the Central County Transportation Authority. Next is the approval and acceptance of an easement with Impact Label Corporation at 8875 Crum Avenue in Comstock Township for water main installed as part of the Impact Label building construction project. And finally, adoption of a resolution to vacate the east 135.75 feet of the public alley located between Beacon and Center Street. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Commissioners requested action as a motion to approve items one through nine, hold item 10 until October 17, 2016, and authorize the city manager to sign all documents on behalf of the city. Is there a motion? Yes. Moved by Commissioner Urban. Support. Supported by Commissioner Anderson. Clerk Borling, please call the roll. Commissioner Knott. Yes. Commissioner Milzarek. Yes. Commissioner Sykes. Yes. Commissioner Urban. Yes. Vice Mayor Cooney. Yes. Mayor Hopewell. Yes. Commissioner Anderson. Yes. Thank you, Commissioners. Motion carried. G1, Mr. Manager. Regular agenda. Is ad adoption of an ordinance to amend sections 36-99 and 36-100 of the Kalamazoo City Code to provide that motorists provide a minimum five feet, five foot distance when overtaking and passing a bicyclist. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Anyone wanting to comment on this item, please step to the podium. You'll have four minutes. Give us your name and whether you live within the city. Seeing no one, commissioners, requested action, a motion to adopt the ordinance. Is there a motion? Second. Moved by Commissioner Knott. Support. Support. Supported by Commissioner Mozart. Discussion? Vice Mayor Cooney. Thank you, Mayor Hopewell. So the purpose of this ordinance is to protect our people who ride bikes. And we're so wonderful in providing bike trails and having so many of our people, a lot of the people here tonight, that ride. And that's great. And there's no question that we have to alert our, our drivers to be more careful about people, especially in the light of the terrible accident, not the accident, but the terrible event that we had over the past six months. I would think the three feet was more reasonable given the size of our streets. But given the choice of five feet or nothing, I'm definitely going to support the five feet. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Further comments? We've had enough interruptions for the night. <laughs> <laughs> no more. Throw them out. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments, Commissioner? Commissioner Milzar. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to take this uh, opportunity to encourage us at the city and, and city staff and, and everyone involved to, to look at this also as a challenge. Um, you know, there's a lot of discussion about three or five feet and what that means with lane size and um, you know, being accommodated with motorized traffic. 
And I hope we can look at this as a challenge to make sure we build enough safe routes that intentionally move cyclists through, through the town so that you can still have vehicle traffic moving in a, in a fashion that's undisruptive to them and cyclists all moving in an organized fashion with, with a lot of designated routes and infrastructure, whether that be on or off street, but just really intentional. I, and I know it'll take a lot of time and effort to get there, but I, I hope we view this as one of the first steps um, towards that process. That's all. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Urban. Uh, thank you, Mayor Hopewell. I, I'd like to uh, extend what uh, Commissioner Mozarek was referring to and think of uh, this uh, change in ordinance with respect to bike passing uh, s safe distance as um, an example of how as we become more densely populated in the city and we try to increase uh, pedestrian and bike activity uh, downtown, uh, there's an economic uh, uh, benefit from that and also a social benefit from that. Uh, the roads may be for cars, but streets are for everybody. <laughs> and what we have in Kalamazoo uh, basically is streets. And so I, I, I view this as uh, an opportunity for people to stretch their awareness of other forms of, of transportation on the street. I, I, I think bikers could, uh, as we heard uh, Paul Selden say, could, could uh, uh, perhaps be more respectful of, of, of laws uh, regarding stopping at intersections. And motorists certainly could be more respectful of, of uh, bicyclist safety. So there, there's some mutual opportunity to, to grow into uh, appreciation and respect for other people who share the public uh, streets. So um, that's kind of like the 10,000 foot level, <laughs> a bit of encouragement for all. This is just one part of what we need to be doing more and more as a city is, is uh, respecting one another's uh, space and one another's needs and uh, ways of being. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Other comments? Clerk Borling, please call the roll. Commissioner Milzarek. Yes. Commissioner Sykes. Yes. Commissioner Urban. Yes. Vice Mayor Cooney. Yes. Mayor Hopewell. Yes. Commissioner Anderson. Yes. Commissioner Knott. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner's motion carried. Mr. Manager, you have a report this week. <laughs> See, so what you've just caused is that I'm going to get 37 emails tomorrow saying, why did I treat him differently, you differently than him? I think so they were applauding for my manager's report. Oh, is that right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and yeah, one yeah. of these folks will be that email. <laughs> there you go. Um, I have a couple of items that I'd like to update the commission for. Um, first of all, the memorandum of understanding we are uh, waiting uh, to hear back from the donors. So we hope to receive some feedback again by this week. And um, so at this point, I'm tentatively planning to bring it back on the October 3rd meeting, but we will know for sure beginning part of next week whether that schedule can be met. So we'll certainly keep everyone informed about that. Um, this is the last monthly pickup for bulk trash. Um, after this month, uh, we go to a quarterly bulk trash frequency um, based on our budget decision that was made um, during the 2016 budget deliberations. And so the next bulk trash will be, pickup will be in December, and then we'll be on a quarterly basis, uh, plus two extra pickups during the year that we'll announce um, at a later date. And then today marks the beginning of our United Way campaign and um, through the city. So we're looking forward to several activities. Uh, this year's campaign co-chairs are Martin Marcos from the city manager's office and uh, deputy city clerk uh, Shelby Moss. So we've got planned uh, events planned this week and next um, and hopefully raise money for that, that excellent organization. So that's my report this evening. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Any questions, Commissioner? Commissioners, <clears throat> Mr. Attorney, you have a report this evening? No, Your Honor. Mr. Clerk? Not tonight, sir. Thank you very much. We are now at citizens' comments. Is citizen have any comments this, e this evening? Step to the podium. You have four minutes. Give us your name and whether you live within the city. 
Good evening, sir. Good evening. I'm Frank Warren, I live at Lynn Terrace. You know, uh, I seen something September the 9th that really made me feel kind of proud to know that an eight-year-old girl, I wish this guy could have seen her, could have seen this little eight-year-old girl who donated $1,350 to the honor flight. That's to send our veterans to Washington, D.C. For, the, for, a, for a whole day on Saturday. I had a chance to see her at the, at the, when they had the dinner over there, and I had a chance, I, call, I called Dan, I asked Dan, Dan, can you get her phone number? He said, I'll have him call you, Frank. You know, I talked to the American Legion on Sunday, and they want to do something special for this girl. The third district does, and also, I'm on the verge of calling the 48 in to see what they want to do. I know I'm going to do something for the girl. I've got a Vesta home that's valued at around $500, and we're going to give that to that young girl for what she did, because if you'd listen to what she said, it would have got you, because she says, you know what? These veterans go to work every morning and never know when they're coming home at night, and I kind of struck home. And here, and watching, come down here and watch some people sit down, refuse to sit, pledge allegiance to our flag, and to honor a player. I'll tell you, that is, that takes, that's take, that, that makes me feel as if I got to be a proud American of what I do. I wouldn't, I, I couldn't live that way. I am who I am. And I know what these other kids need. Here in this time, and, and you know, when kids will do that, her dad and mother had a lemon stand. That's how they raised the money. And they're trying to get more places next year that they can put let this lemon stand up and raise money for the honor flights again next year. They, their, their goal, I think, next year is higher than what it was this year. I think, I, they never told me, but I, ble I believe it's higher than $1,350. I think it's higher than that for these kids, this little girl, but you know what, it's just a wonder to see some little girl like that, eight years old, look up and say, thank you, veteran. How many of young kids do that? I don't know, because I, when I was young, I was about 12, and I watched them bring them back over to Percy Jones General Hospital all shot up. And I never thought nothing about it. But you know, today, I wish I had thought about it when I was a kid growing up, you know? What could we do for our veterans? But that was back after World War II was over, and we didn't think there was going to be another war. But they was. And thank you very much. Okay, thank you, great. sir. Next, please. Good, Good evening, evening. ma'am. You guys may recognize me. I came and read you the Riot Act a couple meetings ago. Ma'am, can we get yes, your name? Yes, my name is Marta Lehman, thank and you. I live within the city of Kalamazoo. Thank you. Um, and I've got three things to talk about, and I know I have four minutes, and I'm going to try to tie them all in together. Um, number one, if you look out of the window, you'll see a fountain, and the water still flows, and the fountain depicts a white man standing with a raised sword over a native person. My question is, when I go there with my son, and he asks me, what is that? When he is old enough to speak, what do I tell him? Hopefully, by the time he's old enough to speak, I won't have to explain it. I'll be able to see there's an indigenous person, there is a white person, there is a black person, they're all holding hands. Something like that. I do not believe that at, we cannot make a change. It's so simple. Put out a bid request. Put out some sort of contest. How can we redesign this so it's a little bit more modern? I do not believe that this should be a message that we send in this community. Two. Ronnie Dunnigan, James Dunnigan. Excuse me if I sound nervous, I'm a little bit shooken up. I just watched the video of him die in a police vehicle while the police officers talked about a wife who gets right up in the morning, you know, she just jumps out of bed and th they're carrying on a conversation while Ronnie has a seizure, foams at the mouth. My question is, have you seen that video? Mr. Mayor, have you watched the video? Watch the video. A man, someone's son, someone's father, someone's brother, died in our custody of the 
people who are sworn to serve and protect. They say they claim that the hospital released him, but I saw on that video he still had the little stickers from where the monitor was. He was moaning for 10 minutes in the car, moaning, and he was foaming at the mouth. They stopped, tried to make him stand up, which he couldn't. He was dead weight. They fell on his chest. They tried to, they did not call for an ambulance. They didn't do anything. They got back in the car. They drove all the way to the, to the county jail. Why hasn't anything been, tell me if I'm wrong, has anything been done about this yet? Has anything been done, Shannon? I'm not sure. Maybe I'm just living in a bubble. Something needs to be done to hold these officers accountable. Number three, foundation of excellence. A friend of mine posted a little meme. I am the foundation of excellence. Not two millionaires that want to pour in their money to put influence under, you know, under the city. Okay? Um, and there's going to be a lot of media attention regarding this subject. And I want you to be prepared. This is going to make some waves. This is going to make headlines. This will be on TV. What kind of headlines do you want them to say? Would you want to say that this is unprecedented because the commission said no, that we want to keep money out of our politics? The blue ribbon panel, which you put together, Mr. Mayor, I believe, I, you know, I will be the first to admit when you correct me and tell me that I'm wrong, I believe that you put together a panel, this blue ribbon panel, and they recommended that we do something else. And then your friends came in and your friend said to do something else. So can we get an independent panel that doesn't have someone that's hand Thank you, ma'am. Your time has expired. Thank you, ma'am. Your time has expired. Your time has expired, ma'am. Your time has expired. There's other people that are going to have the opportunity to speak. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Anyone else wanting to address the commission this evening? Seeing no one, we are now at commissioner's comments. Commissioner Milzar. I have no comments this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Urban. Thank you, thank you Mayor Hopewell. Uh, well, I wanted to just uh, use this opportunity to say uh, something about uh, the Fountain of the Pioneers, um, the, uh, the uh, um, depiction of the uh, American Indian uh, is in that fountain uh, out in Bronson Park. Uh, I was uh, a member of the uh, Kalamazoo County uh, Public um, Art Commission. Uh, and uh, so uh, in that capacity, I studied that issue and came to learn that um, it's more complicated than it appears. Uh, a counter argument uh, for keeping that statue there, but not necessarily, that's not sufficient. I'm just saying the statue has artistic significance and it represents a point in our history that was true at the time. And the people, the man and his uh, a student who designed it and the uh, Mr. Ian Ellie who actually uh, 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 fabricated the thing um, was, was really pretty enlightened for his age and we have to remember that what we do in our age might look pretty pretty bad 50 years from now so uh, let's not be too hard on what happened then uh, and try to put it in the context of American history. What was depicted there uh, is, looks pretty dreadful, but it's symbolic, it's abstract, uh, it, it evokes, uh, it invites us to uh, reflect on what it means to us, and it will mean different things to different people. And for anyone to say that it's got to mean what it means to me is really pretty arrogant, if you don't mind my saying so. Uh, so I hope that we can uh, uh, step back and view this in a broader context. I will say that something very exciting that's going on that is uh, an outgrowth of what first happened with uh, w the outcry about that statue is uh, a gentleman in town named David Brose and uh, his uh, 
people connected with the Kalamazoo City Historical uh, District Commission uh, are working with the Native American tribe, the Gun Lake tribe, to uh, station several markers around the city, marking the part of the city of Kalamazoo that was belonged to that tribe at the time the city was founded. Uh, where White's Road bends uh, is part of that, that border. There are going to be uh, interpretive uh, things at each marker. There's going to be something in the uh, Kalamazoo uh, County Museum that will explain all this. And there'll be a marker at, here at the fountain, uh, uh, probably with a, 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 a Q QR code thing that your cell phone can tap into to, to read about it, to really give the context and the balance that, that needs to be uh, uh, out there about that part of our history. So um, I, I invite all of, all of you to ask me more about it, and I'll be happy to talk with any of you uh, about, about what, what, where we can go and what's happening and, and how you can help us really tell the whole story. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Knapp? No comments tonight, sir. Thank you. Commissioner Sykes? No comments tonight. Commissioner Anderson? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think it's uh, actually appropriate tonight. I would like to recognize a, a longtime community uh, resident and volunteer, Victor Van Fleet, mm -hmm. uh, who is 97, passed away this past week. Uh, and he was as avid a bicyclist as uh, anyone I know here in town. I had the pleasure uh, for many years. I had a real estate license, and Victor Van Fleet was a broker here in town, and he was the one who... Uh, made sure I could have a place to park my license when I wasn't actively doing that work. I got a chance to know him then, but uh, I'm not sure how close to 97 he was still riding his bike, but as far as I know, uh, it was very, very close. He was able to ride his bike uh, for many, many years. I loved it. Always a great advocate. So I just want to recognize his passing. I think he was a man who was ahead of his time, actually. So my... Uh, Condolences go out to his family, and uh, hopefully all of us can dream that we will either be still swimming <laughs> or biking or even walking when we're 97. Thank you, Commissioner Vice Mayor Cooney. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just two things. One is the, I want to uh, congratulate the Hispanic American Council for their Fine fiesta on yes. Saturday. It was a beautiful day. A lot of people out there. They had terrific yeah. music. Sound like Santana was playing out there. They did really, really well. And it's so great to see that because um, I don't think that uh, the Hispanic ca uh, community gets enough visibility here. I think we need to get them out there more and, and really, really appreciate all that they contribute to the community. My second is a little bit. Um, on the other side, and that is um, last week I had the opportunity to go to the funeral of one of those 17-year-old young people that lost their lives, the Quarian. And the last time I saw the Quarian, he was playing basketball over at the Boys and Girls Club. He had played for Narcs, he was, and he was like excellent player, but it's not just that, it was that the, the young people really uh, trusted him and liked him so much, such a tragedy. I was really impressed at the number of his classmates and his teachers that, that showed up to honor him. And um, it just made me think how precious the lives are of all these young people. And a lot of them have some very significant struggles. And that we as a community have to do more, I think, to help them in, in the struggles that they face. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I'm going to do a couple quick things. Uh, I'm going to call the Director of Parks and Recreation to come up to talk about Bronson Park a little bit. I know Commissioner Urban mm -hmm. mentioned it, but maybe we can get a few more details about what is going on with the park, with the fountain, with all the activities. But let me press, press, preface mm -hmm. it with this. We spent two years working with the community, the arts community, the historic mm -hmm. community, and the tribe mm -hmm. to determine a path forward regarding the fountain. We agreed on a path forward regarding the fountain and the park. And the tribe, the native people, are involved in this discussion and involved in this plan. So sometimes I understand that there's information that we don't all have, but there are many things that are being done, and we included the native people. And so just for accuracy's sake, 
though I did not convene the Blue Ribbon Panel, we convened the Blue Ribbon Panel, but for accuracy's sake, I did convene the tribe, the historic folks, and the arts individuals to try to determine a path forward regarding the fountain and the park. Mr. Director. A, a retired archaeologist who still works uh, in the community is doing a great deal of work uh, regarding um, working with the tribe and preserving the, the history of the tribe and the boundaries of um, where they settled in this community. And at the end of that, there will be historical markers throughout the community marking the borders uh, of where the tribe had settled originally uh, in Kalamazoo. So that's that's a result of um, the master plan and, and everything that we've done. That We had a steering committee of a, about 20 people, I believe. We probably had a, around 16 people per meeting. Uh, that process last, lasted over about nine months. We had a tremendous amount of discussion uh, and a great deal of input from the community. There were some people who were not in favor of the, the, the focus on preservation that we had. Um, but as a group, we decided that was the, the focus that we were going to have was preserving that park while also looking at opportunities to uh, enhance that space and activate the space. Um, I'm very excited about the master plan and, and where we're headed. Uh, I think in the coming months, you're going to start to hear more about the uh, spray pad and the skate rink and where it's going to be located and, and some, of the, some of the changes w is Wi-Fi and some different things that are going to happen to make the park better for everyone. So we have a, a lot going on right now. We're gearing up for kind of the public part of the fundraising campaign. We're still in the quiet phase. The goal is to raise a million dollars before we um, start with the public segment of the campaign. And we're at around $720,000, I believe, that we've raised already. So that's a good chunk of money. We have about $2.1 million left. Um, <coughs> pardon me, I'm battling the bug. Um, we have a couple events coming up. One is the uh, 100 Extraordinary Women, where a hundred women have agreed to pledge a thousand dollars over four years. That event's going to be at the KIA on o October 19th. And this is really kind of a sneak preview, but October 20th, um, the, the 100 Extraordinary Women event will kick off Bronson Park Week. And that is going to be um, a week filled with some activities and just to kind of get people into the park. We're having some large renderings of some of the key areas of the park. Um, designed by an artist, and we're going to post those on, on large 4x6 four, four banners. We haven't quite figured out how we're going to do that, but we'll figure it out. we got some great, talented park staff. And so people will get to see um, what some of the new areas will look like. And so it's kind of a sneak preview of what the park will look like once we start construction. So as soon as we can get that $2.8 million raised, um, we'll get to the point where we can you know, break ground. And um, my guess would be more likely 2018. Um, unless somebody writes a check real soon. So I'm guessing we'll probably put shovels in the, in the ground in 2018. That's a quick overview. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Thanks. Um, commissioners, I'm going to uh, divert a little bit uh, and for a, a point of personal privilege and allow Commissioner Urban to make a statement that he forgot to or didn't neglect it to make earlier. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor Hoopal. I uh, got so excited about re uh, responding to the uh, Bronson Park uh, fountain that I neglected something I would prepared in advance. So if you'll bear with me, I want to uh, share this with you. It has to do with the, uh, the donor's uh, offer uh, <coughs> uh, for the city. Um, I've been thinking about the implications of accepting a $70 million donation over three years to the city and the promise of an endowment to follow. This sounds great, but let's check out the implications. I don't know what all of them are, and I hope you'll help me and help all of us explore them. Um, this is a transformational undertaking. This is the biggest thing that's happened to Kalamazoo since the Gruen plan in, in the early 1950s. Uh, this is, as I said, transformational. But what will we be transforming to? 
That is a question that has not been discussed at all in meetings of your city commission. This is your city and we are your elected representatives. We have a big responsibility to fulfill. I'm asking each of you to reach out with me with your hopes and your reservations and share them with the other commissioners as well. I'm, I'm definitely available uh, and uh, I, other commissioners would appreciate your input as well. So the money has been offered. Then we developed the vision for using the portion of the money that remains after having subsidized a property tax reduction. Unless new construction within the city occurs, we will have traded penurious autonomy for dependency. On a more optimistic note, we could say we are, uh, also are getting the possibility of growing ourselves out of dependency. So there's, there's the hope. But, but initially, we're going to be in a dependent uh, situation here with uh, independent donors paying the city, income, uh, the city property tax for you. That's where the 19.27 mills down to 12 mills comes from, is the donors. And I hope there's a lot of gratitude about that, uh, but it doesn't really move the ball into self-sufficiency for the city. Uh, going back to my prepared text, very briefly now, uh, ideally we would develop the vision first and then see where we need the money and where we can accomplish things under our own power without someone else's money. Where we need more money for specific projects, we go out and solicit funding from the interested sources. That way, the city is in charge and not some less democratic entity. And that, that Democrat is with a small d. I want to be very clear about that. So um, a vision for the city is, is key, and it's not too soon to begin creating it. So I want to share that with you. Thank you for indulging me. Thank you, Commissioners. We are now at uh, item N, a request for a closed session uh, to discuss labor negotiations and to consider a matter exempt from disclosure by statute. Sorry, I couldn't read your writing. <laughs> Is there a motion? <coughs> Moved by Commissioner Knott, supported by Vice Mayor Cooney. Clerk Borland, will we be returning to action? Yeah. Clerk Borland, please call the roll. Commissioner Sykes? Yes. Commissioner Urban? Yes. Vice Mayor Cooney? Yes. Mayor Hopewell? Yes. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Knott? Yes. Commissioner Milzar? Yes. Thank you, Commissioner's motion carried. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone, for being here.